Hi everyone and welcome back to Macaroon. This video is going to be about Museum Gel, which has been featured in many viral TikToks. It's a niche product used for arranging objects in museums, but some people realize that it's very useful for organizing stuff in their home as well. This is basically a crystal clear gel that can be used to stick and remove things without leaving any residue, and the functionality is surprisingly similar to nanotape. But obviously, my first thought when I saw this was, can you craft with it? The texture looks incredible and it's the closest thing I've ever seen to a perfectly transparent clay. Over the years, I've made many videos about clear clay, but most of those products are difficult to work with and not completely see-through. So I finally decided to get my hands on some museum gel and I have a lot of questions. Can you sculpt with this? How do you add color? And most importantly, does it dry hard so you can keep the pieces forever? You'll find out all the answers in this video, plus some bonus experiments, like whether you can blow bubbles with a museum gel, just like with nanotape. As you can tell from the branding and packaging, this is an American product and the instructions are in English. I find it fascinating that the intended use for this is so specific, whereas the product itself is pretty versatile. You're supposed to use tiny pieces of this gel to prevent objects from falling over during an earthquake, which is a problem that I have honestly never thought about. Maybe this is the reason it's not very well known, because the target market is so niche. I think that this material has potential for massive mainstream appeal, especially in the whole slime, fidget toy, or DIY community. Based on first impressions, this might remind you of liquid glass putty, but the quality of museum gel is much better. Those putties are notorious for leaving oily stains behind, whereas museum gel is completely dry without any residue. It actually picks up every tiny detail of my finger and stays in that shape, which is something that thinking putty cannot do. It also has no smell whatsoever, which is usually a good indicator of quality. The booklet doesn't show any ingredients, but it does say that this is non-toxic. The only detail you get is that this is called a thixotropic liquid, which is something that can mold itself into the shape of other objects. It also says that it takes 60 minutes to create a secure bond, and I'm wondering whether this means the gel actually dries when exposed to air. If that really is the case, then this would be the first truly transparent modeling material. My main concern is that museum gel might be too soft to crafting. This looks like it could have the texture of thick slime, in which case you can't do any sculpting with it. But to my surprise, the consistency is really solid, but also very malleable. You can shape it into a ball or cube, but also press it flat without anything cracking. If you pull on it very quickly, then it does rip, and the texture reminds me of very soft wax. But if you work slowly, then you can even create soft peaks like this, which is a sign of good clay. If you remember my cold porcelain video, this is exactly what you're looking for when making DIY clays. The next thing I want to try is whether you can blow bubbles. This reminds me a bit of melted nanotape, so I thought I might as well give it a go. It seems like museum gel is not elastic enough and the bubbles keep popping. However, later in this video, I did manage to make one, so please watch until the end to see that. Now I'm going to try adding color using markers. I've seen this method on various Chinese apps and it saves you a lot of time messing around with loose pigments or paint. I'm just coloring the gel like this and then kneading it through. This works perfectly and it doesn't even leave any residue behind. Imagine how aesthetic a rainbow would look when made using this method. I decided to try a jellyfish design which fits well with the transparent effect. To give it more depth, I'm pressing a piece of plain museum gel flat and then wrapping the pink piece inside. I love this effect, but I decided to make the inner part darker so it shows up well. I'm just repeating the marker technique and then wrapping that inside clear clay. At this point, I'm a bit unsure how to proceed because I don't know the properties of this material. I'm adding some plastic felting eyes like with my other clay pieces, but the transparency means that you can see the back part of the eye from certain angles, which doesn't look that great. 
it also feels like the eyes are slipping out of the gel. So I decided to make the legs first before adding any small details. To do so, I'm rolling out a small piece of pink clay and then cutting it into five even pieces about the size of a tic tac. Then I'm arranging them into a flower shape and then adding the head on top. Now I'm starting to understand what they mean by thixotropic liquid. Even though museum gel has great sculpting properties, the pieces start to lose their shape after a few minutes. It keeps flowing downwards, almost like thick slime. I have to keep remaking the jellyfish in an attempt to add all the details before it starts to flatten out. But I still really love how this looks, and adding some glitter makes the transparency pop out even more. In the end, I feel that acrylic paint works better than plastic eyes because it moves with the surface of the gel. But as you can see, the shape of the jellyfish keeps turning into a blob. I have a feeling that this material is not going to harden in time, but I'm going to leave it out to dry and see what happens. One fascinating thing I noticed about museum gel is that even though it can become a bit cloudy when you're working with it, the material turns crystal clear when left alone. These are two random pieces of clay on my table, and they remind me a lot of the clear slime that I made in this video. However, the texture is much thicker, and this is wonderfully satisfying to play with. Unlike slime, the gel is so thick that tiny air bubbles don't tend to get trapped inside, and this helps it stay perfectly transparent. Here's the jellyfish after about 10 minutes, and it's slowly turning into a pancake. This still looks adorable, but it's a shame the shape doesn't stay. I had a bit of leftover pink clay, so I tried blowing another bubble. To my surprise, this one worked, even though it ended up pretty small. This almost looks like a little jellyfish as well. The surface is not as bouncy as a nanobubble, but you can actually touch it without breaking the membrane. I'm not sure how long this is going to stay like this, but I'll keep it in a safe place just in case. The final experiment is whether you can make water bubbles like you do with nanotape. This time I'm using a syringe, but quickly realized that it's not going to work. The gel is too thick to be pushed apart by water, so the liquid simply flows back out. I did notice that wet museum gel can be pressed into an incredibly thin membrane, almost like plastic wrap. This is beautiful and can probably be used for some type of crafting. And now we're going to keep the jellyfish and bubble for a few days just to see what happens. This is the first evening and the jellyfish has completely melted into the pot. It's still very soft though, and I'm not sure whether museum gel can actually dry up. The bubble is miraculously still there, but it's fading into a puddle. I'm really scared to touch this because I'm sure it's going to pop. So here's everything again two days later, and the texture hasn't changed. Even though it's such a shame that museum gel can't hold its shape, I think there's still plenty of uses for this in crafting. You could use it to create miniature drinks, bubble tea, slushies, or anything that can be filled into a container. You could also create shapes and sensory textures to play with, just like slime. The great thing here is that it doesn't get dirty as quickly as slime, and it doesn't dry up. I can actually still see a tiny indentation of the bubble here, but it's mostly gone. I also find it really oddly satisfying to see how thinly I can stretch this gel out without it breaking. I ended up leaving these in the open air for a few days, but they still didn't dry up. I'm pretty sure the formula is designed to stay soft, so the objects in museums can be removed again. In the instructions, when they said it takes 60 minutes to set, I'm pretty sure it meant that the gel takes an hour to flow into the correct shape, which then sticks two objects together. The material itself isn't supposed to harden or cure. I hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to check out my shorts as well. I make a lot of exclusive clips over there, and also show funny and weird products that don't quite fit with the tutorial format on my main channel. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!